This is Lauren Fogelman at ExpertSportsPerformance.com, working with highly driven, motivated athletes on being cool, calm, and confident under pressure. Today's topic is how the Super Bowl's power outage disrupted momentum. Did you see the Super Bowl over the weekend between the 49ers and the Ravens? If you did, it was like watching two different games between the first and the second half. The Ravens were off to a strong start, and they maintained it in the beginning of the second half as well when Jacoby Jones had a 108-yard kickoff return leading to a touchdown. It was a Super Bowl record. And then came the unexpected 35-minute power outage, and that's when the switch happened from positive to negative for the Ravens, and that the 49ers were then able to step up into their momentum. So let's go ahead and see what the Ravens did to really gain momentum in the beginning and then how the 49ers were able to get their foot back in the game. So the first thing is errors. Uh, basically, there were mistakes made by Kaepernick of the 49ers, their rookie quarterback, and it was something that was just basically due to lack of experience. After that, exposed. Kaepernick's lack of confidence showed through in his body language. It was a tell. If you were tuned into him and watching him, you could see that he didn't come off as confident as he might have in other circumstances where the pressure might not have been as great on his shoulders. So he was really exposed and we don't have that much control over our body language. So that's when you can tell what's really going on underneath the surface. Add to that experience. The Ravens had experience of beating the 49ers in a previous game during the season and encouraged when at the end of the first half, the score was 28-6. The Ravens were pretty encouraged that they were in a strong position to win. So after the power outage, that's when things turned around and there was a switch and the 49ers came into their power. Um, they really and started with having 17 unanswered points and they had an amazing comeback. So let's see what happened with them. The plan, basically they stuck to their game plan. They didn't change it when they were under pressure like so many athletes or teams often do. They really stuck with their solid plan. The plunge, they were so far behind that they had nothing to lose. So they took some extra risks in order to see what might happen and if that was going to give them an edge. Positive. Even when Kaepernick, Kaepernick, their quarterback, made some mistakes and he threw an interception, they kept him in the game. So they were positive that he had what it took to be able to pull them through and come off with a strong finish. And then finally, presence. Under pressure, it's easy to get caught up in what didn't go well and all the mistakes going on or fast forwarding to the outcome and trying to, what can you do to possibly catch up and even out the score? But they actually stayed really present and that's what helped them look for those opportunities and take advantage of them when they showed up. So one of the things that I want to ask you is when you're under pressure like that and the score is not in your favor, do you actually stay focused and play full out no matter what? Or do you give up and actually not give it your all and it's like being a quitter? People respond in, the, in both those ways given the circumstances when they're under pressure. So think about it. Do you stay strong or do you say, what the heck should I be putting all this effort into it? And you just quit. You don't give it your effort anymore. What I want you to do is to consider this challenge. Think about a time when you had momentum psychological momentum, not just physical, but psychological momentum. You were really feeling good and confident. And tell me, what was your ambition? So there's going to be five questions. I want you to go through these because they're going to really give you some insights. And the first one has to do with ambition. What was it that you were motivated to accomplish? And then after ambition, think about your attitude. Was it positive or negative once you made that decision about what you were going to accomplish and what you were going to step into? When you make that decision and you fully commit, it has a physical response that happens in your body. So that's the arousal. How did your body respond once you were fully committed? After that is the actions. How did that affect your actions, the things that you did when you were in play? And finally, the achievements. When you looked at the end result, whether it was your score, uh, how you performed, your standings, 
what was the outcome? What were the numbers and how did the numbers reinforce the attitude that you started out with? So go through those five different questions about your ambition, the ad your attitude, arousal, your actions and achievement, and see if you can notice anything that might lead to insights as to how you wanna be able to show up when you're in these precious situations. Go ahead and leave a comment as to what you took away from this training. Click the Facebook likes. To, I'd really appreciate that. I'd love to hear from you as to what you thought about the mental game in the Super Bowl between the 49ers and the Ravens. If you're interested in my free special video training series, go to expert sport, expertsportsperformance.com, put your name and email in it in the boxes, and you'll immediately get the seven essential steps to high performance. I look forward to hearing from you, and my mission is to show you how to stay cool when the heat is on. Lauren Fogelman, ExpertSportsPerformance.com.